Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to cover uh, batch enter transactions in uh, QBA, which is also available in QuickBooks Enterprise. This this, this tool is it's, it's incredible, and and I, as I go to other accounting firms in the area where we do some sort of local private CPE, we, we see so many people underutilizing or not using these tools. So I want to take advantage and, and kind of cover a practical example with a real bank statement and show you how that will work. Also, I'm going to play a little bit with add, edit multiple items. It's actually going to go sort of hand in hand. So I'm going to switch over to my virtual PC here inside of my Mac. So, so assume that, so if we can do everything through bank feeds, that is probably the best option, the best optimal situation. There, there are situations where we can't get bank feeds because we have the 90 day problem, right? So we have, we can only get up to 90 days or because our, our client uh, doesn't want to give us access to the bank or no matter how much we try to explain it over the phone, they, 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 don't, they can't get it to work. Um, so the, the alternative to this would be assuming that we have an actual Excel spreadsheet, right? We can, maybe we downloaded this straight from the bank. This is actually my real bank statement uh, for the last three months, for ju July through September. So it, assuming that we can get a spreadsheet like this, and then I'm going to show you how to get this data into QuickBooks uh, using the batch enter tool, but I'm going to show you a couple of tricks, and some of these tricks are going to be sort of Excel related, not necessarily QuickBooks related. So kind of bear with me as we're going to switch uh, QuickBooks and Excel back and forth. So the first kind of thing I will do is I need to separate debits and credits because with QuickBooks batch enters, I'm going to show you just to give you some background here. We're talking about this tool here called batch enter inside of accountant edition. So with this tool, I have a choice. I can bring in deposits or checks. I can't bring both at the same time. So I have to do it in two different passes, two separate passes. So I'm going to start with checks. Um, so I'm going to come in here and then I'm going to just run a quick filter here because the, the way my bank downloads, it actually tells me if it's a debit or a credit. So I can actually use Excel filters to just filter these out. So I'm just going to select here check and debit. That way I'm only going to see debits. Okay, good. That's the first step. Uh, the, the second step is on these descriptions, we're going to have to clean these up a little bit. But I'm going to show you a, a trick. It's actually a really nice trick to have. Is I'm going to create a new column. And then what's going to happen is the original description exactly as the bank has it, we're not going to touch that. Okay, one of the things that frustrates me about doing bank feeds sometimes is that, uh, th that we will rename the, the, the word from the bank and then if there's a mistake there, we have to go back to the physical statement to double check. So by keeping uh, a field for memo that keeps the original wording untouched, unadulterated, it gives you the chance to always review that. On the second column that I created, this new column, we're going to call this A. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the information from the memo site into payee, but I'm going to limit it to 41 characters. So this is, this is an Excel thing, right? So we're going to do equals left, and we'll select the text. And basically the left command, what it does, it only gives me the first uh, X amount of characters from the left to the right. So by doing this, um, I only get the first 41 characters, right? So anything that's really utterly long that's going to cause a problem, like all these weird numbers, uh, they're going to be cut out or at least cut short, okay? So that's the first kind of thing that I do. The second thing I do is I'm going to copy this data and repaste it back in there uh, with, uh, let me just uh, unfilter this here for a second. So I'm going to take this exact same thing that I did, I'm going to undo my filter, and then I'm going to take this uh, formula that we did with the, the left formula. I'm going to apply it to all my debits and all my credits. So I'm just kind of dragging this down. I know through the webinar you may get this information sort of flickering. So what I'm doing is I'm just copying uh, the information. So, so it just repeats throughout all my debits and all my credits. Okay, there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this information. I'm going to repaste it back in there, values only. Okay, that way I don't get any other formulas in there. Okay, and then I'm going to go back and do my filters again. And I, I know this is kind of techy stuff, but I'm telling you, once once you learn this and this will be recorded, it's going to be great. Um, now, some of these vendors, like for example, AC Moore, I, I'm going to shorten this manually. Now, this this will take a little bit longer, right? Because there's some sort of manual cleanup here in Excel. But um, if you have a lot of repeating vendors, like Best Buy, for example. I can just uh, drag them and copy them like this. So I'm just going to show you a couple, okay? So the next step is after we cleaned up our, our spreadsheet, we're going to grab this entire pay list and we're going to copy it. 
Okay, and then we're going to go into QuickBooks, and then we're going to switch over to list, edit multiple list entries, and then we're going to go into vendors, and then we're going to paste them all in there. So now a caveat to this is if I don't clean them up in Excel first, I'm going to get a lot of sort of repeated vendors with you know with uh, the last digits of the store number or the transaction number. Or, or something like that. So, but by doing this, you have to keep in mind, right? These checks would have to be actual real payees, and uh, some of these cost codes, for example, should have been compressed into one. For the sake of time, we're just sort of doing this a little bit quicker. So, I'm going to save these here, and then basically, what it's going to do is going to in my vendor list, it's going to bring in, and this was a blank file before. It's going to bring in all the wording exactly as it came from the bank. Now, again, this is why it's so important, which we're not doing it. The, the, exact, the complete exercise is so important to clean this up in Excel before bringing them in because this will give you sort of a crowded uh, vendor list, right? And we can manually adjust these, but it will just be more painful, okay? So that's, that's the first uh, kind of part there. Then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that these columns here, date, number, memo, payee, and debit, match exactly in our batch enter transactions in QuickBooks. So we're going to click on customize columns on the top right and we're going to repeat this. So it's going to be date and then the second one was memo. Uh, let's just double check that. Date. It was actually date, number, memo, payee, amount. So we're going to do date, number, memo, payee, and amount exactly. Right? So now I've got my five columns right here across that look exactly like my spreadsheet. So I'm going to copy all, these, all this information. I'm going to hit copy. And I'm going to go back into QuickBooks and then I'm going to select the top left box, right click and paste. And what the system will do is going to bring in every date, every transaction number, the original memo exactly as came to the bank. So for example, Best Buy, we had cleaned that up in Excel to just Best Buy, but I still get the full name. You would be utterly surprised on how useful it is to maintain the original name from the bank because a bookkeeper, a data entry person sometimes renames it to something else and then you, 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 you don't get the original information. Then I'm going to click Save Transactions and the system is literally going to push in 300 transactions, whatever amount is into it. Now, some of these, the ones that are missing information, like for example these here, uh, the vendor wasn't created for some reason, so I have to create the vendor for these, right? And then lastly, the system didn't let me push them in because I'm missing an account, right? So I do have to do the last piece, which is actually classify these things. Just to simplify, I'm going to grab an account here, office supplies, and then we're, we're making the assumption that we're going to go down and, and actually select all of these. So I just did all of them sort of in one shot. Just so, just so they all come in into one uh, ledger account. So I'm going to hit Save Transactions, I'm going to hit Yes, and then these are hundreds of transactions being pushed into QuickBooks. You can change the vendor name later on, you can uh, merge vendor names later on, and that sort of thing. Now, for the ones that I didn't clean up, because I didn't clean them all up, um, I would have to, or I didn't import, I actually have to go down the list here and make sure that I'm creating vendors. So, um, so I'm going to go in here and create the vendors. I can't have columns here because QuickBooks won't recognize columns. So for example, this one says it has a little column between fee and zero 01, so we have to definitely get rid of that. So as, as, after, after we go down, we just have to make sure that these names are, are not too long, right? Uh, so, and they have to be created as vendors. And as we go down, the system's going to recognize uh, them as vendors, and the little red will go away. So, as you see it, uh, this come through, then the system starts recognizing these. And again, if you're cleaning them up in QuickBooks already, in, in, sorry, in Excel, and uh, uh, and you're using them, the, the, the system is just going to recognize them exactly how it's, how it's doing it now. So, I'm going to hit Save Transactions. Uh, finish here. The transactions are being saved. And I want to make sure I'm good with time. There we go. So I'm going to go into my bank register just to kind of show you. And um, I'm going to go into Chase. And there it is. This, this was empty before. So all the transactions came in. That's $89,000 worth of transactions. Okay. If I go into, uh, if I go into uh, Excel here, I could, you know, I could double check the amount of transactions and just do a quick sort of check. When we reconcile, it will show up. 
um, <laughs> the question was, <laughs> the question is, can I change the header name? So, I, 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 if I understand correctly, let me go back into that this tool here into uh, customized columns. I can only use the ones that are here. Okay. In addition, in addition, if I have custom fields, uh, but they're name level custom fields, they will show up here too. So it's just the ones that are available here. I can't add random columns because the QuickBooks won't know where to put the data. So I can only uh, add the columns that QuickBooks allows me to put data in. I cannot remove the account from it, um, so I, I can add the item. Uh, and then once the item is in there, I'll show you, there's the item. So once the item's in there and you choose the item, the account column grays out. Right? So you won't, you won't be able to add a, an, an item and account because then the system will go haywire. So yes, you can add an item. A single item though. So one of the deficiencies, not a deficiency, but one of the challenges is if you're importing data that has multiple items, you cannot do them in batch. You have to go down here on the bottom where it says split and then you can actually paste them with individual items inside of them, but you have to do transaction by transaction. So I can't, I cannot batch enter uh, multiple transactions with multiple items. I can do multiple transactions with one item, but if I have multiple items, I have to come in here and do one by one. It's still better than ma manual entry though.